Um, we have elected officials from uh, the town, also the city here tonight. Thank you for attending. Uh, also, those neighbors and community members that are here tonight. Um, the purpose of the meeting is really to do uh, a very simple project unveiling to the public. Um, we have yet to actually express to the community at large the intent for this particular property here, uh, the Colonel, former Colonel Ledyard School. Um, the town and the city had collaborated in issuing an RFP and also in reviewing proposals for the adaptive reuse of this particular property. And what we'd like to do tonight is actually uh, introduce the preferred developer, Bill Bullock, and his vision for the redevelopment of this site. Um, in addition, we can answer any questions, and I believe there'll be an opportunity. Uh, we'll have some small groups, if you care to, walk into the building afterwards just to see its current condition. Uh, I'm hearing some stories from some people that actually went to school here, and they're curious to know, you know, is Clifford still in the wall? Yes, Clifford is still there. <laughs> and um, I know that Bill is, you know, quite sentimental about trying to convert former school buildings reintegrate them back into the community in the neighborhood uh, i think he's going to tell that story as we move forward so i don't want to steal his thunder okay. bill block uh, please step forward and introduce yourself okay. can i keep this off yeah, like yeah. Right. okay uh as uh paige has told you my name is bill Bellock. i'm of bell site development llc i'm a real estate developer with about 40 years experience <laughs> excuse me in uh, residential commercial uh, real estate development. Um, briefly, I excuse me, responded to the town on an RFP process for this uh, site. Um, I think we started about a year ago is when it yes. first came out, fall of last year. Uh, this, as you well know, especially the neighbors, I'm the one who sent you the letter. Uh, to, and obviously, some of you, you all got it, but you're here. Uh, I found out from the gentleman, I always thought the school has been closed for 10 years. Um, it's 10 plus years, I understand, which is probably if you go inside, you'll see, uh, you see that it's been close for quite a while. Um, my strength over the last 10 years has been multifamily or uh, uh, residential development, be it active adult or age restricted, uh, small apartment complex, uh, multifamily. But most recently, uh, if I don't know if anyone's here is familiar with the town of Enfield, Connecticut, I converted a uh, former parochial school, St. Adelbert's on Alden Avenue, into a very similar building into 21 bedroom apartments. Um, there are differences between that structure and this structure, but overall, same vintage, same layout, same central loaded corridor. Uh, it's a very, very similar situation. The town has, has adopted regulations to allow for the redevelopment of an existing structure. Um, it's actually for this particular, without going into the whole of the zoning behind it, the intent of the regulation was specifically to convert an existing town or institutional structure into a new use. Um, this really lends itself to somewhere between the school itself, between 14 and 20. Uh, one, actually, one of the units is actually be a two bedroom, it's larger where the labor, library used to be, but substantially uh, one bedroom units. The reason that is, I don't know exactly how many units today in the very, very early stage is that certain, for instance, the gym, I'm not sure what to do with the gym. I'm not sure what to do with the uh, offices of the nurses' rooms. There's, there are certain parts of the school which just don't let the, the classrooms are easy. The classrooms are, if you look at them, that's exactly the size of the unit. That's not going to change. Um, what I have done is part of the RFP process, I had to develop a concept plan both for the school and for the balance of the site. Uh, briefly, and this is actually very accurate, this is an elevation, just the front, the south elevation of the existing school. Um, one is with a flat roof, one is with a flat roof with a slider onto a patio, and one is with a gabled roof, uh, basically changing the roof line of, of the school. Uh, and I also gave a concept plan. This is an actual typical unit of one of the classrooms. They're mainly, like I said, they're at least 12, if not 13, one-bedroom units. They're all just like this. They don't change. That's exactly the uh, floor plan. Uh, it'll be a 
higher end unit, it'll be granite countertops, hardwood cabinets, uh, washer dryer hookups, uh, slider onto a patio. Uh, very similar to what I've done in Enfield, and they've been extremely well received. So that's the school elevation, which I'll be happy to answer questions on. In addition to the uh, school, you have the site. Uh, the site, and I actually saw, she's not here, I saw a neighbor the other day. If you come up closer after we, uh, we step aside, you'll see that the site actually goes down to the first island. Um, this is what we're talking on right here. This isn't a part of West Street. This is actually part of the, of the site. And then in addition, you had the, uh, the fields. I don't know if anyone has been behind the school, actually. The ball field, and it slopes all the way down, ultimately, to the town offices. The highway on one side, uh, the cemetery on this side, and then the uh, West Street. Uh, the intent there is to somehow get around to probably the east side of the school and access the rear of the site and put an additional uh, 50 to 60 units of, uh, in multiple building. So on the entire site, you're somewhere between 70 and 80 total units of one and two bedroom units. The mix is unknown. It's still, you know, we're still in the, you know, in the concept in the market stage. But this is a, this is for the neighbors especially who showed up, Everything is behind the school. There's nothing on this side of the school, uh, maybe parking, but the structure are all from the school and beyond. Um, the, you won't see the units. So the way the, the topography goes, they'll, they'll be below the school. Um, I'm very excited to do it. Uh, it's exactly what I've done for certainly the last 10, 15 years of my career. Um, the mark will support it. The, in addition to the adoptive reuse regulations in the town, there's a big push on having walkable sites, infill sites, especially with electric boat, you know, uh, three blocks, four blocks in one direction, or Pfizer. Uh, every unit will have at least one covered parking space with a storage unit. I'm a big, great believer in the ability to store a bicycle or a kayak or something with a unit. Um, and their market rate, these will be, these, there is a very strong rental market uh, in, the, in the Groton, uh, in the, in the uh, city of Groton, in the town of Groton too, um, which everybody knows. I mean, it's driven substantially by electric boat, but in general, it's just a very strong market. Um, I know as a kind of a quick presentation, uh, if anybody have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them the best I can. Yes? Which way are they coming in and out? Right there. Right. Yes. Oh, right. driveway on, 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 I mean, the vehicular traffic? Yeah. Yes. Right down West Street. Right down West Street. How is the street going to handle that much extra store? Store. Hold on, hold on. Pardon? Why don't you exit and entrance out of the municipal building? So uh, that's not what right for residents. So First off, way, way ahead of the design <laughs> stage, but to the rear of the well, site. That's what our concerns are. To the rear of the site. Four cars plus coming up in the end? The, uh, the speed limit is 20 miles an hour, and the police don't even bother. Everybody's flying up here. So, so, obviously, so obviously it's a major concern with the traffic. Yes. And for those of us who've been living on this street for 11 plus years, some 20, 30 years, yep. uh, we have seen the traffic when people come down this way, when something happens out on uh, Pequannock Road or whatever, they come flying down the street. Kids play on the street all the time. Yep. So would it be possible, I know it's still early in the development stage, to look at the possibility of having an additional path on the north side or the whatever that side of the site is to go in and out maybe connecting to the street up there somehow well this is the problem with the concept plan and this is the problem of having a form like this where the real intent is just to show you where we're headed that nothing has been designed without getting ahead of myself knowing that i have i don't have an active application in front of the town and when you come here i'll be happy to show you the site plan is to the rear of the site as you head down there's significant wetlands, there's a stream crossing, uh, and I don't have access to, to, to the, there's, there's the, if you follow the, uh, the path, uh, the, uh, there, there, it's a walking trail, uh, the, I, I, I don't, I'll be happy to look at it, I just don't see how it works. That's, that's, that's well, a, it's a very narrow stream. it's only like six feet wide. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying in general that that side is the only side you could possibly you do it, yeah. It, I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at it. it. Please. go right into public property, right yeah. into the municipal. I, I just want to clarify, I think this is the first time the project is actually... I'm not sure. This is the first time that the project has actually been unveiled, even in a concept form. So I think the town, the city, and 
the developer interested in getting the feedback, and we would like to take the questions one on one. But tonight is not necessarily the format to come up with the design to address exactly what how we're going to resolve the matters. We want to hear about traffic, parking, noise, intensity, all of that. As Bill mentioned, no application has been made. Basically, where we're at right now is in supporting the concept of converting this building into multifamily housing. How it all actually comes to play is yet to be determined, and part of that will come with the final uh, design work that they're going to work on, and they're going to have to go through the city's planning and zoning commission. There will be hearings. There will be an opportunity for the community and neighbors to engage, to express many of the same uh, concerns or support that you have for the project. But I just want to clarify again, tonight isn't the night that we're going to solve any uh, perceived concerns. It really is to try to unveil the project, give an opportunity for some uh, general input, and also give an opportunity for people to look at the condition of the building. But I'm not saying this to dissuade comments. What I'm saying is we're probably not going to have any of solutions tonight. Right. I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I just I have to say I appreciate the feedback and the, the clarification. But I think that the town and the developer, you have a large collection of the residents of the street that have lived here for a long time, and we're sharing this concern now very early, yeah. and that that should be at the forefront of the thought process going forward, even in the early development stages. Got it. We have, we're still, this is just to unveil the concept, but the sooner we all take into consideration one of the number one concerns that we have as residents of the street uh, as we continue to figure out that process. So I totally support that. We consider that to be feedback we need to hear. I just want to clarify, I'm hearing multiple questions and I want to make sure people don't necessarily think that we're going to have an answer to all of these questions tonight. I think we're interested in capturing the feedback incorporating that in the designs as this project moves forward. That is feedback. That is feedback. That's the number one concern. The biggest yeah. feedback you're going to get is that this yeah. road is not designed to handle another 80 units. No. Yeah. Okay? No way. Can't handle the traffic. Spend the night here and watch the cars fly up and down. Bring your kids over. Cannot handle the traffic. Thank you, Bill. Nice to meet you, buddy. Take care. Nice Good to meet you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of timeline are you looking at for the licensing? And oh, uh, well, the process starts with a zone change, then a, uh, a wetlands uh, application, then a special permit under the adoptive reuse regulation. Probably we started today, we would have your approvals, not your permitting, not your construction plans, but your permitting in a year. It would take a year. Yeah. And part and, and, part and parcel, I'm not ducking a, a, a traffic question. Uh, it's always a tra I've done this for 40, it's always a traffic question. Uh, the traffic is always a part of any application, either traffic count, uh, road condition, uh, impact on the, on the neighborhood, sight lines visual impairment, uh, lighting, that's all part of the application. I sent the letter out specifically to have you here today. Uh, there is no, you, this, isn't, this isn't even official mailing. This isn't a mailing that I have to send to you as a part of the regulation, which is when there's actually a hearing, which is you'll have at least two, if not three more opportunities to put your input in or to make comment or to whatever, whatever wherever we end up. So this was just an introduction. So when I come here and you see my car drive down or someone says that, oh, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about multifamily in some form, in some type of the count or the type of units uh, are somewhat unknown, but we have a basic idea. So I'd rather have you here today and start the process than six, nine months from now have a situation where you said, oh, you didn't let us know or you didn't do that. That doesn't do anybody any good. So we could talk traffic for an hour and it's preliminary, but I haven't done a traffic study. I haven't done any of it. Uh, and that is always a big part of any application. Can you be sending out letters for every hearing? Oh, absolutely. You have to. As a matter of, as a matter, I, I, there's a really bright light in front of me. I apologize. Uh, the, uh, I, I, uh, so the part of any hearing uh, is contiguous property owners. So it's usually 500 feet. It's, all, it's always different, but I, I don't know what the regulation is here. Yeah, so you'll be notified at least 30 days in advance, and it'll be a public hearing. So that's 
This was this was not official. This was just an introduction. So well, that's why we're. The property already, right? No, I haven't. No, they, they they haven't. They haven't. I'm not even. I am just. I'm not even. Tentatively, I'm not even the preferred developer yet. I'm just the one who had the uh, the initiative to do something. To they've asked me to contact and everybody as I've done. I'm doing exactly what the town and the city has asked me to do, and I'll continue to do that. Uh, and you know, there and I'm I still have some ideas how I would like to do some things I would like to change, bring the unit count down a little bit, a little bit of a reconfiguration. But the town part of the RFP process is to maximize not profit, not but the use of a property. In other words, you have an eight-acre site with a school. Do you tear the school down? Do you leave the school? Do you put more units? I don't know. But this was this was a preliminary concept. I could do the school tomorrow. School's easy. It's a piece of cake. It's very straightforward. Uh, this is this is the second the much larger question, which is obviously there'll be more input. Okay. People here from the town. Is the water line sufficient? I'm sorry. Is the water line sufficient? To yes. Yeah, miles? we have capacity for water. How I'm many, really how many inch I, line is here? Yes. I'm actually kind of surprised that the, this area does not have natural gas. I'm not surprised by that, Uh I'm talking <laughs> about water. You sewer, water, what wetlands. Size, what size water line do we have? Water line is a four inch water line in the building. Excuse I me? think the water line in the building is a four inch water line. No, the feed. Coming up the street, how big is the feed, and is it going to be able to handle it? I, that's between the use. public. That's an application so from the public. So they're going to dig court. up the street. And, and sir, we, sir, I'm not want to be it. argumentative. Uh, no, I'm not I, arguing. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't know. Asking questions. I know. And there's officials here who could probably answer. Who could probably answer, but they'll get back to us. I'm sure. <laughs> I, I think that was probably what I referred to. We're we don't we're not prepared to get into a design phase, an engineering phase tonight. As the developer has indicated, we basically are unveiling a concept. And I think some of these questions as to what the diameter of the pipe are, we're not prepared to actually answer that tonight. But that answer will be provided. It will have a bearing on whatever size development has occurred or is approved here by the city. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this has been a collaboration between the town and the city. And Mayor Hendricks, I believe, has a couple comments he would like to make in that regard. Give me some space. I take my mask off. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Keith Hedrick. I'm the mayor in the city of Grot. And you're like, well, what the, what are we doing here? The school is town property. It is town property in the city of Grotten, but it's going to be developed in the city of Grotten. So we'll be using city of Grotten processes. And that means if there's a, if there is a zoning change that will have to be made, it's going to have to go through planning and zoning. Any building permits, those kind of things, they're going to have to go through that whole process. The question to your, the answer rather, to your question regarding utilities, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not sure the size. Is that what it is? That's what I thought it was, was an eight inch line. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you got questions for us, for me, about this, send me an email at mayor at cityofgrotten-ct.gov. And that's going to do two things. One, that's going to give me your questions, but two, it's going to give me your email address. And what we will do, and, and we've done this with the development that's going on over at Electric Boat with the neighbors that are right there on Eastern Point Road, <clears throat> we have an email blast so that we can send out information to you guys so that you make sure that you're going to be invited to the dance, right? I recognize that you guys are anxious about this. I will tell you. Up until now, everything discussed about this was done in executive session. I was invited, I don't know, about a month ago for an executive session? Yeah. About a month ago, I was invited in an executive session, and that was the first time that I found out the concept plans and what they're looking to do. This fits with, the development fits with what the city is trying to do to support electric boat and those kind of things. We recognize that the not, not the parking, but the actual traffic is going to be is a concern to you guys. I recognize that you guys got kids, and you don't want people just driving up and down and up and down. You're going to have people, and they could be coming all hours of the night. There were several different <coughs> things that have been proposed for the use of this property. One of them was warehousing for electric boat, and we dismissed that 
because of the traffic issue and heavy trucks and the concern for the drivers. Uh, we followed the RFP process, we, they, the town, followed the RFP process. There was a counselor from the city of Groton on that RFP selection committee. So I, again, I recognize you guys are anxious about this. You got, no, this is like a big surprise to you until you read your, open your mail and it wasn't a clearinghouse sweepstakes. I got it. I understand you're anxious. I know that. Nothing is gonna be done without your input. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get your way, but it doesn't mean people are gonna steamroll. There's a, there, there is a process, right? There's a process. And for those of you that have seen me in action, and those of you that have talked to me before, know that I don't, I, I call it like it is. I'm blunt as a spoon. So I tell you like it is. I don't lie to you because it doesn't do me any good. It doesn't do the city any good. So like I said, send me an email mayor at cityofgrodden.ct.gov. It gets you, it'll get you on the email blast and it'll get your concerns uh, recorded. Please don't send me an email that says, concept sucks, don't like it. I can't fix, don't like it, I can't fix the concept is bad, right? Give me some specifics so that I can get on the page, so we can get them to the, to the developer and we can figure this out. This is, right now, this is literally one step above being on the back of a napkin. I mean, it's, I mean, we have concept drawings and those kinds of things, so I don't mean to imply that he's, you know, because he has financing and he's done this before, those kind of things. But this is the first time that it has been put out publicly. And so we will, I, I will give you my word that your voice will be heard because all these processes are gonna be going through. It is a town property. However, once it, once it, if, if it is sold to this developer, it is now in the city and therefore it falls under the city processes. And we will follow our processes. And if you don't know what those are, give us, either you send me an email or give us a call and we will make sure that you're aware. I don't want you guys to be in the dark, okay? Now, does that, I realize I haven't answered any direct questions, but do you have any questions that I might be able to answer? Yes. And I can't. Yeah, hi. I, I, I can't see. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm all about this not being a parking lot or a warehouse. I yep. love it. I love the idea that this is housing. We're bringing families in. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, the school, I'm down for it. Um, are we talking about it's going to be either a parking lot or 80 apartments? Because I feel like there's a lot of wiggle room. In, and I know you said, like, you know, between maybe 70 to 80. Um, is the town dedicated to fitting 80 additional families and homes in here? Or is there like a possibility that through what we find out about the environment and what we find out from the traffic, that it can be maybe a little bit more of a reasonable like 40, yeah. uh, 50? Um, there's, a, there's a couple things that play there. One, I can't this, is, yeah. you can't, that I'll uh, this, this, is, this one's pretty free. This one, uh, this is, oh, this is uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> The number was based on the regulations in place, okay? And they give you a unit count. That is, the unit count is based on so many acres and on the zoning allowing you can go backwards. That's all it is. There's no more, other than the basic concept that it show it works. There is, you take out wetlands, you take out steep slopes, you take out ledge, you take out the inability to make it turn or the radial turn. Uh, I gave you I gave you the highest number. Oh. That was if everything was absolutely perfect and I had no underlying issues, 80 units is what the zoning says it allowed. Uh, not because I wanted to say, well, it's going to be 40, and then you knock on your door six months and say, oh, it's really going to be 80. No, that is the that is that is the moonshot is 80. But I haven't done any of the. I don't control the site. I don't. I have. I don't even have an, a contract on the site at this writing. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes on. So you're absolutely right. It's going and then. Traffic count. You're going to say, well, we don't agree with 80, but we think 10 is okay. Well, 10 won't work. 10 is just not nearly <laughs> enough. So, 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 you know, so, it's, so you're absolutely correct that I don't have enough information on the site yet, other than the zoning. And that's why when I keep saying concept plan, uh, that's the, all it is, except for the school. The school's pretty straightforward, as I said before. That, that's cool. that's so, that. So, are the town and city officials then willing and able to limit it from 80 based on oh, sure. feedback? Yeah. 
We're not here tonight to necessarily commit to a number, mm -hmm. but my answer is yes. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my response on that quickly. It's important to understand what the RFP entailed. Very different than a bid. You know, we were not interested in just having. We, we have people that contact us all the time regarding former school properties, and they say, "How much do you want for it?" What that really means to us is the use is something they'll figure out later, and they're going to make an offer. We're going to do a transaction and figure out these details later. We never do that. The purpose of the RFP is to basically start to form a relationship with a qualified developer. We're interested in the use. We're interested in their experience. We're interested in their ability to actually perform. Get this done right. This building's been vacant for, you probably know better than me, uh, in excess of 10 years. It's not on the tax rolls. It's not on the tax rolls. And bottom line, we're interested in trying to do an adaptive reuse. So back to your question. As Bill said, the 80, that's a concept. Are both the city and the town willing to work with a number that's less than 80? The answer is definitely yes. We don't have enough information right now. I couldn't tell you the diameter of the water line. Maybe Bill knew, maybe the mayor knew. I can't tell you the width of the street. I can't tell you the traffic counts. I can't tell you exactly what the wetland limits are. I can't tell you the width of the stream that's back there that probably impedes the ability to put a road connecting with the municipal complex. There are a lot of questions we don't have answers to right now, but I think the answer is that we have flexibility, that we're willing to actually find out what is the best, what is the best use for the property, including its intensity. Um, so if I understand correctly, 80 is like the max? That's the max. Okay. That's the max. This is one. Absolutely. Make sure I have that correct in my head. And I will guarantee it will not be, it will be less than 80, but because that is the absolute max based, based on, on the eight, Based that's on a, 8 acres. That's a perfect areas. world. Everything laid out. Oh, I'm sorry. Just not. Uh, I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, and it's just, I'm always reluctant to do concept plans, and I'm always reluctant to give a number, okay? But in this forum, I got the ability to see you guys up front to say, 80 is a number. That's it's not a neighbor going to be surprised us later on. Uh, if you looked at the regulations, the regulations are very straightforward. It's it's that's a number. Uh, so I will go on record, even though I don't control the property, I don't have a contract, I don't have an application. I'm saying it won't be more than 80. It will be 80. It'll be less than 80. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. I like eight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, Patrice Granitoski, Mayor of the Town. We have Councillor Parker, uh, Councillor Obrey, and Representative Conley here with us this evening as well. And I just want to also encourage you, while you're sending your email to the City of Groton Mayor, send one to council at groton-ct.gov, and that will go to all of your councillors. And then we will know your concerns as well when they come back with the next step. Okay. The one thing I did want to say that a lot of people haven't mentioned is these are one bedroom apartments and you're in a nice little neighborhood and the, the goal is to make it walkable. Yeah. So the goal is so that you're not going to have those cars going, that you're going to have people walking to and from their offices or biking to and from their offices. So that's something that I think is important. How do you know that? <laughs> people oh, drive everywhere. <laughs> I don't think they drive to EV, but... Um, so go ahead and send those emails out, and we will take a listen as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming out. Thank you, and Mr. Bell. There's a, a little addition to the, the traffic, the additional traffic. Right now, everybody and their brother uses the church parking lot as a street and goes on out West Street to get to Quantic Road to, to get away from going through the stop plate. As it is, it takes me sometimes five to ten minutes just to back out of my driveway because of that, because yep. we're right next to the yep. church parking lot. Yep. And people do not pay attention there. And my thought is that if this happens and the traffic starts getting bad going through the church or going through the grade school's parking lot and the church's parking lot, that what will happen is the church will close off that road again and then all the traffic has to go on West Street, which means I'll never get out of my driveway. I think traffic with many of these projects is always a concern. 
and all I can say is that we promise traffic is going to be addressed as a part of the overall approval process. We haven't even entered that yet. Bill is still actually assembling his final team of experts that will look at infrastructure, traffic, uh, architectural design, environmental. This building uh, has lead, asbestos. Uh, there, there are a lot of items that have to be addressed as this project moves forward. So we are not in a situation at this moment where we know exactly what the traffic situation is going to be but that variable certainly is going to be a part of the review process and I am confident that the final approvals will integrate that in a way that uh, is balanced for the neighborhood yes uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of things are down the road but if and when things get off the ground will it be done in uh, coordination for the, in theory, proposed uh, reclamation project for Quantic Road? I mean, you're going to be having things going on all over the place. The, the road reclamation? Well, you know, stripping and re redoing the Quantic Road, that was supposed to... There's a lot of work going on what there. You, what you may not know is that for those of you that... <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that may or may not know, uh, Brian knows because he was in the department that was that was working on this, but the Quantic Road from Rainville up to and including Five Corners is, is scheduled for a full depth reclamation uh, and rebuild. We were going to we were going to start this year and then with the COVID pandemic, it shut the state down for reviews and those kind of things, so we're I do not see us putting shovel in the ground this year. I do anticipate it moving forward in 2021. Uh, I don't remember, Brian, do you remember the timeline? Was that like six, nine months? Somewhere around that. I, I don't remember the exact timeline. I, I can get that and get back to you, but that timeline, and then that will totally restore uh, Quantic Road from Rainville up to and including Five Corners. And then I don't I don't know when these guys would start, but I don't see them starting. 2022. Okay, 2022. So in theory, if everything works out okay, unless COVID hangs out forever and amen, then we should have the Quantic Road done, and that should not be an issue with this project. Did that, Brian? Did that answer your question? Yeah. Just okay. seeing, you know, when the paved the road here yeah. and then after the paving was done the house was put in there yeah. the new paving was dug up yeah so if there's, uh, if there's coordination well, of one gets done before the other yeah well yeah. absolutely one of the things that I'm concerned about is I don't like to pave a road and then go dig it up so one of the things for the Quantic Road I had to commit to the state of Connecticut that we were not going to be digging up uh, Aquatic Road for the next 10 years. And so we checked with, with water, sewer, electric. We, like you said, we don't have gas. Yes, I guess. We, we messed that by uh, cable, everything else to make to ensure that we weren't going to be doing it so that we could either get it done before the project or during the project so that we wouldn't be uh, uh, digging up the road after the fact because I don't want to, we don't want to do that that makes sense so we will coordinate projects we're starting to lose some daylight but we did want to offer an opportunity uh, for a couple small groups to go into the building just for a couple minutes but before we do that are there any um, are there any last questions that people may have there's one that one of the guys that had to leave wanted to ask what what based on what your plans are based on everything else and, uh, and other projects like this what happens to property values in the area in, in the, the area um, okay I have to be careful I answer this uh, yep. because the uh, it's more anecdotal than it is. Uh, 
and I have, to, I have to be very careful to answer this, is that everybody assumes multifamily is somehow a, a dampener of values only for the fact that people have single family homes or what people, people have. I mean, if I could build a subdivision here, that's fine. But if you look at the higher end rental markets, especially in Grotts, there's beautiful, some new beautiful stuff here. Uh, market rate rental properties done well have no impact on property values. And I can say that categorically because I've done subdivisions, I've done uh, uh, condominium projects, I've done active adult projects. Um, and this is, is, is in touching real quickly with something that the mayor touched on, is that the process itself is simple as far as, you, let's say they had something important going on at Paquanic Road. As part of the issuance of a permit, you have limitation on hours you can work. You have limitations of what time of year. I can't pave after, I think it's usually November 15th or something. I mean, there's a series of windows that I have to operate within, which I'll be happy to give the same. By the way, they also said about sending an email address. In my letter, I have my email address. You send me an email, I'll forward it to everybody you need to know. So there are, we got pretty far afield, but there are really limitations and controls in terms of what you can do as far as tearing into a new road. Uh, if they were going to redo Paquanic and they would have a plan of development, they would do all the laterals up front. Even if they're never used, they're put in the road and capped just, just to have, be done with it. Uh, the way I'm looking at this project, not more than 80, but the way I'm looking at this project, this is really a series of small projects. The school is one small project. The first building is one small project as the market warrants it. So this isn't, I'm not building an 80 uh, unit property right here all at once at one time. It'll be at least two or three buildings and then and four if you include the school and it'll be one at a time. Uh, so, uh, but as far as your, your, your questions, and I know that I do this all the time, I do this for a living. All these questions are answered and they're all in the process somewhere and you are notified. Anything from schedule to zoning to land use to, uh, to lighting to uh, traffic studies to legitimate traffic, you know, the, the stress that I'll be happy to share with if you're a matter of public record. So it's all part of the process which we really got ahead of where I was going to be here today. But I'm glad, you know, I'm glad, you know, now I know all you and I know where the issue are and you have an idea where we're headed. So I think in the, in the long run, I think it's very healthy. Um, and I, I'm done. If you have any more questions, I'm done. And I'm going to thank you for your time. I was the one who proposed opening up the school just to show you it's a neat old school, uh, but it's an old school. I mean, uh, it just, you can see the shape of the school and it's going to be better than that. That's, that's the hope. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, Mayor uh, uh, Page, you know. I also wanted to thank you for your time and just a reminder uh, for those of you who may want to see the inside of the school, um, please do. We'll, we'll actually escort you through briefly. Uh, we do not want to stay inside the school too long. As I stated, um, there is some environmental uh, issues that, that are concerning to us, mold in particular. Um, there is also lead and some asbestos, so the visit will be short. Basically, if you want to enter the hallway, get a visual, and exit the building, that would be fine at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you.